Lieutenant General George Patton's Third Army, had come a long way since it was activated on August 1, 1944 in Normandy. Following the breakout from Normandy, Patton's army had swept 400 miles in one month's time, all across central France to the Lorraine region. The quick advance of Patton's troops to Lorraine, forced the Germans to send reinforcements to the west to block him. By early September 1944, General Hazlip's American 15 Corps of the Third Army, was advancing forward against the German 64th Corps, with the aim of pushing them back over the Moselle River. Leading the advance was the French 2nd Armoured Division, under command of General Philippe Leclerc. Simultaneously, the Germans planned to use their bridgehead west of the Moselle, for a counter-attack against the southern flank of the 3rd US Army. To this end, the Germans moved Panzer Brigade 112 to Epinal by rail, which is near to the town of Domper, and Panzer Brigade 111 to Remiremont. In a two-day pitched battle at Domper that began on September 12, a battle group from Leclerc's 2nd French Armoured Division of Hazlitt's Corps, smashed the 112th Panzer Brigade of Lutwitz's 47th Corps, which had been sent to check Hazlitt's advance. By 1944, the French 2nd Armoured Division had a long combat history. It contained a large number of veterans and had by this stage of the war, earned a high reputation under Leclerc's command. The division was composed, to a large extent, from volunteers from African colonial units. It also included more recent volunteers as a result of the advance through France. While American forces engaged the German 16th Infantry Division from the north, a French combat command, under command of Colonel Paul Girit de Langlade, had penetrated a gap in the German line, and sidestepped the German 16th Infantry Division. Now, behind the German front line, Langlade posed a significant threat to the German positions west of the Moselle. This threat could cause the breakdown of the entire German front south of Nancy, and Colonel General Blaskowitz of Army Group G, ordered an immediate counterattack to save the division, and restore the front line by clearing the area from French incursions. Panzer Brigade 112 was relieved from the reserve to tackle the situation, supported by elements of Panzer Division 21. Although the Panzer Brigades were originally created for the severe situation on the Eastern Front, many of them were ultimately deployed in the West. On the 12th of September, Langlade captured the town of Vittel, then pushed deeper behind the German lines. While Langlade advanced, German forces had been gathered for a drive west, were now tasked with retaking Vittel. On the same day, Panzer Brigade 112, moved out from the town of Epinal in two columns, toward Vittel. The first column consisted of a Panther Battalion, and a Panzer Grenadier Battalion, with limited artillery support. This formation arrived at Domper on the evening of the 12th. It was supported by 112 Panzer Brigade's second column. This consisted of the Brigade's second Panzer Battalion, which was equipped with Mark IVs, along with an additional Panzer Grenadier Battalion. This column took a different route, and on the 12th arrived at Darny. The first column, having arrived in Domper, decided to encamp and spend the night in this village, which was situated in a depression surrounded by forested hills. Lack of reconnaissance or even a hint of the whereabouts of the enemy, apparently did not disturb the command, because they preferred to stay in the lower exposed village, than in the surrounding forests on the high ground, where they could camouflage their tanks. The inexperienced German troops also turned out to be good weather soldiers, because they did not send out any patrols nor posted any guards during the rainy night, but sought the comfort of the village houses. Meanwhile, Langlade's command, having seized the town of Vittel on the 12th of September, continued east in three battalion-sized task forces. They were deployed that night, just short of the villages of Domper and Damas. The latter being a small hamlet southeast of Domper. Langlade set up his command post, at Viel sur Ilan, and his three battalions were distributed, around in the area southwest of the village. The three battalions making up Langlade's command, were composed of units drawn from several battalions. Langlade retained a battalion-sized force under his personal command, which was deployed around Viel sur Ilan, the two others were known as Group Massu and Group Minjonet. Langlade's group was at a decisive disadvantage when it came to tanks. The French had 48 M4 Shermans, 5 Light Stewarts, and 11 M10 tank destroyers. 
These were inferior to Panthers, but the French also had four times as much artillery, and Allied aircraft ruled the skies. During the late afternoon on the 12th of September, French civilians had brought word to Colonel Langlade's headquarters that a large German tank force was moving on Domper. This intelligence was confirmed in the early evening, when French outposts picked up the sound of heavy vehicles congregating in the area. By late evening, Langlade was well aware that the two formations were acting independently, and the nearest Panzer Brigade was deployed poorly, around the village of Domper. He therefore decided to attack the following morning. His plans were simple, the right column of Group Minjonet would strike through Damas and cut the main road between Domper and Epinal. And the left column of Group Masu would attack the enemy concentrated at Domper. While there was some minor engagement of the two forces on the evening of the 12th, the main battle started around 8 a.m. on the 13th of September, as French forces moved into position around Domper. Langlade ordered his artillery into position, and prepared to engage the enemy. The village of Domper lay in a narrow valley, and as mentioned earlier, most of the German tanks were assembled here on the low ground. Langlade took advantage of the poorly sighted German units, and seized a number of well-sighted positions overlooking the village. Aware of the loss of these critical positions to French forces, German troops attempted to regain the initiative. The fighting erupted around the east of Domper, as German Panther tanks, attempted to move south. M10 tank destroyers, supported by accurate and sustained artillery fire, stopped this initial advance. This in turn, was followed by air strikes by American P-47s, against Panthers strung out throughout the villages. While the air attacks during the day were to account for a considerable number of tank losses, the anti-aircraft fire by the German forces were also considerable. Under cover of the air attacks, French forces moved around behind the town of Domper, so that the Germans were engaged from three directions. Further air strikes occurred around 11 a.m., as French forces entered Domper. The German commander at Domper requested support from the 2nd Column of Panzer Brigade 112, as his inexperienced troops struggled to contain the French advance. Around 13 hours, Langlade, located at vl sur Ilan, was warned of advancing German forces. This was Panzer Brigade 112 2nd Column, consisting of Mark IVs and further infantry. An ad hoc French force was gathered, and hastily deployed. This scratch force was able, with some determination, to delay the advancing German force, which was committed to battle in a desideredly attack. The French, however, was ready for this new threat, and destroyed seven Mark IVs at the first encounter. As this action continued, the German losses increased, and finally the southern column abandoned its rescue attempt. Late in the day, the Germans in the Domper sector deserted their vehicles and fled on foot to the east, leaving the battlefield to the French. Meanwhile, further poor German counter-attacks and breakouts from Domper continued throughout the afternoon. They however, only resulted in further casualties with little gain. French deployment and close cooperation between ground and air elements caused considerable damage. During the whole day, the village of Domper was under fire, and any attempt to break out was stopped by even more intensive fire by the artillery. In the evening, the 1st Battalion of Panzer Regiment 29 was destroyed. The overall losses for Panzer Brigade 112 were horrible. An estimate of 350 dead, 1,000 wounded, and of the total of 90 tanks, only 21 were left. The 112th Panzer Brigade had lost nearly all of its Panzer Battalion, only four of these heavy tanks escaped the Domper debacle. In addition, the Mark IV Battalion had sustained some loss, bringing the total number of tanks destroyed to more than 60. Like Panzer Brigade 106 a few days before, Panzer Brigade 112 met its doom during the first engagement with the enemy, although they outnumbered the enemy. On the Western Front, the Panzer Brigades were not fit to counter the mobile and well-equipped Allied forces. Unlike the Russian infantry, the Allied infantry was lavishly equipped with anti-tank weapons, and was closely supported by tanks, artillery and air forces. This fight, characterized warmly by the 15th Corps commander, as a brilliant example of perfect air-ground coordination, not only was an outstanding feat of arms, but also had dealt a crippling blow to Hitler's plans for an armored thrust into the 3rd Army flank. If you have enjoyed the story of this tank engagement, please subscribe and support the channel.
Many thanks for watching.